the short haul repatriation more or less closed on Sunday. Short haul still hasn't gone away, but a lot of what's been happening in travel is on long haul now. Airlines closing down the long haul routes to the east. Emirates are ceasing on Wednesday. A little bit of confusion about that. Initially said they were shutting all services, then said they were keeping a few, including London Heathrow, then said they were shutting all services. Etihad are also shutting all services on Wednesday. And for individual countries, we're having serious shutdowns on Wednesday. A significant one is Singapore. Not only is Singapore shutting down, but it is stopping transit through Changi Airport, a route of choice for many people. So there is a big scramble to get people home. And at this stage, nobody's quite clear what the options left are. Qatar are still flying. You cannot get in and out of Qatar, but the airport in Doha is open for transit passengers as of now. Aircraft being grounded in large numbers. Social media is full of photographs of aircraft stacked up side by side on airports across Europe. The position with Transatlantic from Ireland is that those routes are still continuing. Americans have to be repatriated home. That service will continue for the foreseeable. It's very, very likely, even as most of the routes are shut down, that some sort of service will be kept open between Ireland and North America for key personnel and for cargo. I think Aer Lingus will certainly continue to serve JFK, whatever about the other routes. That Ryanair is also positioning itself for a very quick return to the skies should they get the green light. Interestingly, a very different approach by Ryanair to some of the other airlines. They're not parking their aircraft. They're keeping as much open as they can. They're down to about 20% of the schedule. But they're asking pilots to turn up at the airport. They're running some of their aircraft for maybe an hour. They're keeping uh, skeleton services, likes of London Gatwick, London Stansted. They're down to four a day. And the idea is that the aircraft will remain in service. They will be ready to go should anything change which is looking increasingly unlikely. Biggest issue dogging travel agents, without a doubt, is refunds. And that situation is getting worse, not better. Aer Lingus say there's been a very, very big take-up of their offer of 110% of the fare on vouchers. While that initially was put out to the clients, the Aer Lingus clients who'd booked through travel agencies as well, it's not clear if the voucher offer applies to people who booked through the agents. It's also clear that Aer Lingus are not anxious to give refunds. Their position is legally under EU 261. They are obliged to give a refund, but they seem to be, like most airlines, trying to defer or buy time in any way they can to avoid a major cash crunch. And one of the ways they're doing it is following the American model of offering credit and offering those vouchers first. This is a very serious issue for people who have booked to travel to the United States. They will not be admitted unless the flight is cancelled. They do not get a refund and are not entitled to compensation under EU 261. The flights are still flying. And Aer Lingus's position is this is a matter now for insurers. They are giving the voucher offer to those people who are booked to travel to the United States. But it's going to be a bit of a fight to get cash back for those people, um, especially as the insurers are saying, you have to go to your airline first and only after the airline has turned down your requests for a refund will they look at your case. One of the casualties, Ireland to West Airport Knock, Ryanair are cutting all their services Tuesday, tomorrow. Stobart are cutting all their services on Sunday. That means the airport will close down. Ironically, the only Stobart services left will be the PSO services to Kerry and Donegal. That means the Irish taxpayer will now be paying heavily subsidised flights that are empty to and from two airports and they're the only flights that will be flying to those airports. And further pressure from IATA. They are changing the terms of the BSP to create another delay that will put further pressure, cash pressure on travel agents. It's clear the relationship between cruise ships and ports are breaking down. Two more cruise ships refused uh, docking today. That means that even if you don't have coronavirus cases on board. It's very, very difficult to get a berth. That's something that the cruise lines are going to have to work very, very hard at damage limitation over the coming days. The situation is evolving day by day. There's nope. a little bit of grandstanding by politicians claiming credit for repatriation flights that are being put on by airlines. And we are at the mercy of decisions by politicians at this stage, not 
the aviators, not the regulators, are not the people who are at the helm of the travel industry, just watching everything change around them.